Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today, our question comes from Dave, N2AWE. And he has built the little ARRL kit for an NFED half-wave antenna for, that will cover 40, 20, 15, and 10. And what he's concerned about is the so-called counterpoise. Now, the problem with end feeding an antenna is that there's only one line there to, to feed. If you're feeding it in the middle, you've got a line going this way, line going this way, fine. If you're feeding it off-center fed, there's a number of ways of doing that, but you still got one wire going this way, one this way. But if you feed it at the end, what do you do with the other side of the wire? Well, it's interesting. What you have in that box is a 49 to 1, not ballon, but un -un. So it's unbalanced to unbalanced. Coaxo, it's got a shield around a center wire, okay? Now, I want to look at that a little more carefully. What you've got is the center wire. I'm looking end on. The center wire, some dielectric, and a shield around it. Now this might as well be three conductors because this, remember RF waves tend to travel on the surface of the conductor. So you've got a wave traveling on the surface of the center conductor and the opposite that is coming in on the inside of the shield here. This central wire comes in to a coil that's on a core, usually a ferrite core, okay? And then this connects back here to the inside. So what we have here is we've got the RF comes in here and goes back here on the inside. That leaves the outside, okay? Now, I'm just going to draw it in a standard sort of a pattern here. You can obviously make this an auto transformer, but this is your one, this is your 49 time impedance transfer, which means that the turns ratio is actually seven to one. We have one turn, well, three turns here and 21 here. So the ratio of the turns is 21 thirds, which equals seven. So the actual impedance ratio is the square of that, seven squared equals 49. So this is a one to 49. So this is 50 ohms right here, and coming out of here, 2450 ohms. Now here's where people get confused, okay? Here's your antenna, right here. Now, what do you do with this end? Well, let's talk about possibilities. Actually, this is connected to this which goes on the shield, okay? So actually any energy floating back this way comes out the outer shield right here, okay? This can often serve as your counterpoise. You can do one of several things. You can hang a little piece of wire out here. You can connect this to earth or you can use this here. Now what I like to do is use a fairly long piece of coax, like 50 feet. Okay, and then bring the coax down to lightning surge protector. That's uh, one of these right here. Okay, and this is mounted to ground. Okay, now that what's grounded here is the actual outside of the shield. Well, the inside too, but the outside of the shield, which is where you're getting stuff that's looking for a counterpoise, is coming down the inside of this, and it's shorted to ground here. So they won't go beyond this, so you can take over here and take this into your radio without an issue. So we'll call this a lightning surge protector, and that would be something like that, okay? And, and these are extremely simple. There's just a little spark gap inside. And then the coax side of the connector is attached to ground. This usually works very well. In all of my experiments with... These 49 to 1 anons, this is unbalanced to unbalanced, 
is I just used the outside shield of the coax as the counterpoise, and I make it plenty long so it finds enough to work with and it's grounded on the other end. I mean that a real ground, a ground rod. Okay, if that doesn't work and you start getting feedback into your station and so on, attach a wire to the connector. There's a little connector on the bottom of all of these things. And if that doesn't work, make the wire longer. If that doesn't work, make the wire longer. If that doesn't work, ground the wire, whatever. But I've never run into a problem using it this way right here. So that's what I recommend. Don't make this a 10-foot piece of coax. Make it 30 or 40 feet, okay? Then you don't have to worry so much about what's going on in the ballon. The energy will go in here, come back in here, and kind of hold itself in a capacity of holding here in the counterpoise, and then go back out again and so on. Now, you do have to do something. You can't just connect it. And one of the things you definitely don't want to do is put a ballon right there, okay? Because you want to use the outside of that coax. It's an un 49 to 1 impedance ratio. Remember that the first rule of antennas is this. Everything affects everything. So when you have your permanent station 49 to 1 ballon up, which I do right now, I have my ARRL, I've extended the line so it'll work on 80 meters too. And it's up right now, it's up 30 feet on each end. And uh, looking at the SWR ratios on the thing, it seems suspiciously low. And I thought, well, this antenna is something wrong. It's not going to radiate very well. Well, I put it on Whisper, and oh my goodness, I've been overwhelmed with reception reports from around the world. I had one from Antarctica. I had one from China at one point, Australia, Hawaii, of course, all over Europe and all over the United States and Canada. And it's just pretty amazing. Africa, too, for a very simple little thing and this right here is my whisper transmitter this is the Zactec one and it comes fully assembled if I recall correctly it's not very expensive and then that way when I'm not using that antenna for something else I will use it for a whisper okay so what would you recommend for the counterpoise when using this antenna in a permanent installation? I'd recommend putting a fairly long 30-foot or 40-foot piece of coax on the thing before it hits your ground rod there because that outside of the coax hits that ground and generally will not go any further. The Whether or not you need a counterpoise will depend entirely on the installation. If you're doing POTA or something like that, just tie one end to a tree and I think you'll be in good shape. Backpacking, same kind of thing. I would keep tucked in a side pocket a little piece of insulated wire, you know, with little clips on them or something so you can attach these in different lengths and take a look at the SWR on the band that you are interested in working at that particular moment. Okay. And you'll find that extremely flexible. These are really good antennas for portable. I've not tried one yet in a portable installation, but I do want to do one because I want to try some of this POTUS stuff that parks on the air. I had an Augie come by, drop by, on his vacation out here, and he and I went down to the local state park and operated POTA. And he would make a contact, and then I'd make a contact with the same person. And it was a lot of fun. So I think, of course, as the sun set, it got a little cooler, but <laughs> that's not something I had to worry about. So that's what I would recommend. Generally, you don't need one, but everything depends upon the installation, where it is. You can move a wire five feet and it'll behave totally different. So take some pieces of wire with you. That should work well. I hope that helps. I've was quite surprised. I was expecting when I first tested the my antennas 80 through 10 and fed half wave that I'd have to start experimenting with all different kinds of counterpoises. Turns out I didn't. The thing worked right out of the box. I was blown away. I didn't think it could be done. I was a skeptic, but I got that thing and became a convert. And now, right now, I've got this one from the league at 30 feet 
flat and it is just exceeding all expectations on Whisper and I'm transmitting let's see 23 dBW 30 dBm is one watt so 23 dBm is about an S unit below that so you go down to half about quarter watt it's a little less about 200 250 milliwatts so it's not very much power and it gets around the world. I mean, this is a good antenna. Dave, thank you for your question. I hope this helps. Go out and try it. There's no substitute for your experience with your style of POTA and where you go and how you make the thing work. So good luck in your endeavors. Those of you who followed along this far, I would like to ask you to take a look at becoming a channel member. You can, right on the page, just click the Join button. And that'll bring you up to three options. I think it's two, five, and ten dollars a month that you can join and be a member. As a member, you get all the videos as soon as they are released. They won't be released to the public until the release date, but in the meantime, they're available to channel members. Now, we are also trying to make the unreleased videos available to the PayPal supporters, the Patreon supporters, and those who drop tips in the tip jar and so on. Anybody who is helping support this channel, we'd like to give early access to the videos. So until we next meet, 73.